Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are in chapter 3 and continuing with the same topic that is 3.2 Static Analysis. This is the part 2 of this topic. We recently covered the part 1 of this so make sure that you have been through that before you come to this video and have understanding of the other previous concerns which is quite basic about static analysis. To start with this in this tutorial we are talking about the static analysis for improving maintainability. When you talk about maintainability it is all with respect to maintaining a code for future reuse and it's just not uh, the code it is all about even architecture and websites and all other uh, corresponding information which you may have with relation to understand how this program or application works. Now what's additional when it comes to static analysis. Generally we know that static analysis is all about finding defects in the code or making sure at a certain point of time that it also helps you to find certain anomalies. But not only that, it, static analysis can help you to maintain the code very well as it requires you to maintain certain expected deviations or you know diversions from the standards. So yes, a static analysis to a certain extent can also help you to enforce the coding standards and uh, may raise a lot of warning with respect to the code analysis and then tell you that what kind of uh, standards you are missing in your code. Probably when you talk about the comments, alignment and ordering of the sequence, making sure that certain parameters are being used and where it is actually linked to and a lot of such supporting things which any other person need to understand than the person who has written the code. So yes, the maintainability will be highly enhanced with help of static analysis tool. So where it is probably like poorly written, uncommented, unstructured code tends to, you know, tend to a harder to maintain. It may require more effort for developers to understand or locate a defect sometime. And probably this is not the developer who has written the code and he might have left the organization then it becomes quite challenging for a new person to analyze and understand the issue. So that's where the static analysis would be quite helpful when you're writing it for the first time. This code or this particular tool can help you to enhance your code in order to meet all the expectation to improve the code maintainability by verifying compliance to coding standards and guidelines. That not only helps that person to write it efficiently, but also helps anyone else looking onto that code probably later in the life cycle. So static analysis tools can be applied to the code used for implementing websites as well to check for possible exposure to security vulnerabilities such as code injection, cookie security, uh, cross-site scripting, and resource tampering including SQL code injection. So a lot of such things can be addressed. We're talking about more in this. Yes, modular design generally result in more maintainable code. So module-wise, when you talk even about like automation testing, you would have learned about keyword-driven or hybrid-driven approaches or frameworks. Where modular framework is another part of it, when generally the codes are prepared in a module form, that is module by module, then it becomes quite simple to understand that what part of the code which is written belongs to a particular module. So yes, the modularity will help more easier access in order to understand the code and structure the code very well. Additionally, to develop or static analysis tool can help you support development of the modular code in the following ways. They search for repeated code. That means if you think that at any point of time, if the code has been repeated, it will help you and warn you about that and you can probably remove that from the code which might not be required to do that. They generate matrix which are valuable indicator for code modularization where it means that sometimes you think you have written it particularly in order to meet the expectation of the product but the modularity is not being implemented then it will prompt you with a warning stating that at this point you must have modularity being included and modularization of the code. They indicate in object oriented code where derived objects have too much or too little visibility into the parent classes. So that's quite helpful when it comes to inheritance and polymorphism kind of concept that you need to have such visibilities to the access of the code or the parent code or something like calling structures which might be really important in order to understand that how the codes are linked to each other. The maintenance of a website can also be supported using static analysis tools. 
Here the objective is to check if the tree like structure of the site is well balanced or if there is an imbalance that will lead to some of the challenges like more difficult testing tasks, increased maintenance workload or difficult navigation for the user. So when you talk about maintainability altogether, it just makes sure that everything is well defined, well organized, well structured in order to meet certain expectations and certain guidelines. That could be even the coding standards and compliance in order to set it as per the international standards or writing the code standards. It, it is just helpful for the same developer in order to uh, find an issue quite easily and have easy access to the details. Plus, it also helps anyone else looking at your code in order to find the issues quite faster. The next thing we are talking in this segment is about call graphs. There's another thing which we need to understand from the integration testing which you could have done in foundation where we understood about incremental and non-incremental testing. Where incremental testing deals with a sequence of modules in a particular order. Whereas non-incremental testing deal with uh, the modules which are connected to each other but does not really follow a sequence. That means all the modules are integrated with everything. But at this point of time, when it comes to such complicated non-incremental integration approach, you may have a calling structure which might be required to understand that how the modules are connected to each other. So yes, the call graphs are a static representation of communication complexity. They are directed graphs in which nodes represent program modules and edges represent communication among those modules. So you can relate it back to your use case diagram or call graphs, control flow diagrams, or even your state transition diagram, which has nodes and branches. Call graphs may be used in unit testing, where different functions or methods are calling each other. In integration testing and system testing as well, when separate modules call each other, or in system integration testing, when separate systems call each other. So you see the application of the call graphs where it is applicable in order to assist uh, define your test cases in order to meet all the expected outcome from the calling structure. So call graphs can be helpful at different levels in order to do a lot of support to you to define how the modules are calling each other at any point of time. Call graphs can be used for following purposes, designing tests that call a specific module or system, establishing the number of locations within the software from where a module or system is being called, evaluating the structure of the code and the system architecture, providing suggestions for the order of the integration. So just a template example here that if you see module A has A, B, C features and module B has D, F, E and there is a calling structure being defined here and this call graph can very well tell you that how modules are calling each other and that may be very well considered when you try testing them in order to meet the expectation of the application accordingly. Further to continue, uh, we do know from the foundation syllabus that uh, there's something called as top-down approach, bottom-up approach, and big bang approach. So top-down and bottom are already included in the incremental, but when you talk about non-incremental, we do have a lot of other techniques which we can use at the advanced level. This is going further deeper and more complex codes to deal with. You may make use of such techniques where the three methods which we are covering in this syllabus is known as pairwise integration testing. So this, this is not the technique which we learned in the previous chapter. So please do not confuse with that. Pairwise technique, it is uh, all about the pairing of the modules where it targets the pair of components that work together as seen in the call graph for integration testing. While this method reduces the number of builds only by a small amount, it reduces the amount of test hardness code needed. So with this help of this pairwise, you would see that what kind of two components are working in pair like to and fro or making sure that if A can go to B and B can go to A, so then I just have to pair, put, put them together in order to see the possible outcomes and integration success. So that's what about this pairwise integration testing is. Neighborhood integration test, all of the nodes that connect to a given node as the basis for the integration testing. That means here probably a module A exists and there are a lot of other modules which are connected directly to A. For example, B, C, D, E 
and now b can reach to a c can reach to a d can reach to a e can reach to a and e can also reach to all these modules so that's where we call it as neighborhood integration test where a particular module is integrated to several other modules directly and you have to make sure that everything meets the expectation nevertheless we always know about mccabe's design is no longer in the foundation syllabus but yes here we are talking about the mccabe's approach in order to meet the expectation of cyclomatic complexity with certain components or modules it basically predicate approaches uses the theory of cyclomatic complexity where a call graph displays that how many times a particular loop can be executed for example if we talk about do while or while when or for loops where a condition is provided and based on the condition the uh, path may keep on iterating within a certain area of the code and then move out of it once the condition is not met so do while is another example of that where you say do while is this less than or equal to 5 so till it is less than or equal to 5 it will continue to operate there once it is met it will move out of that and do the other part of it so yes McKay's design is another part of it which will be very helpful in order to understand the call graphs and help to find integration issues additionally this requires the construction of a call graph that shows the different ways that modules can call each other including and the unconditional call that is the call of one module to another always happens conditional call the call of one module to another sometime happens depending on the condition if it is met mutually exclusive conditional call a module will call one and only one of a number of different modules at any point of time iterative call one module calls another at least once but may call it multiple times and iterative conditional calls that is one module can call another zero to many times again so yes after creating the call graph the integration complexity is calculated and tests are created to cover the graph so on top of call graph you will apply your certain techniques like cyclomatic complexity path testing or statement or decision coverage accordingly so call, call graphs are not just helpful in order to determine the complexity and dependency of a code it also helps you to derive certain areas to test cases or prepare your test cases more efficiently in order to test a particular functionality of the module so yes team that was a really big thing a uh, big tutorial for this topic but yes it was important for you to give you a justification in order to understand what exactly this concept is all about so that's where we talk about the call graphs and this is what we have to deliver from this particular segment of the tutorial today that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'll be there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning